Okay, so this is the final video on the potential step problem and what we're going to do now is derive the total reflectance and transmittance of our particle based on this potential step. Now to actually do that, we need to introduce a new concept that we haven't talked about before which is called the probability current. So a probability current, which is also known as a current density or a probability flux, which is denoted by the letter J, if we draw it in three dimensions, it would actually have the following form. It is a complex number, so it's going to have h bar over 2m, and it is going to be defined as follows. We're going to have our wave function in three dimensions. That's going to be the complex conjugate times the gradient of the function like this minus the wave function times the gradient of the wave function complex conjugate. So this looks a little bit complicated, but in our case, because we're dealing with a one-dimensional problem, we can essentially just reduce the probability current to the following expression. We're going to have i h bar over 2m. We're going to have for wave function complex conjugate times the derivative d psi over dx minus psi times d psi complex conjugate dx. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to establish the following property. We know that we're going to have a current density for each of these two regions. So we're going to have current density in region 1. And this is going to be equal to the sum of the current density. So we're going to have an incident current density. And we're going to have a reflected current density or probability current. So let's call it ref. On the second region, we're just going to have a single current density, which is the transmitted one. So by conservation laws, we know that J1 must be equal to J2 because the energy needs to be conserved. And in this case, what we're conserving is the probability. So what does this actually mean in physical terms? Well, remember that the wave function represents a probability amplitude. So a probability current or probability flux is just the probability of that wave going through some kind of area. So the units for this is usually uh, time units. So inverse of time units time the area uh, units inverse. So basically these are the units for a probability current. We have a probability that is flowing through some area and this is what we call a probability flux. And you can imagine that this is just a consequence of conservation because probability needs to be equal to 1 in some sense when we add it up throughout the whole domain from minus infinity to infinity. So this is not really a very physical concept, it is just rather a consequence of what we have defined in terms of probability theory. But it turns out that it has some analogies with simple conservation laws from physics. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find out what J1 and J2 are and then in the end we're going to be able to calculate reflectance which is going to be the total probability that the particle will get reflected from the potential step. And this is just going to be the proportion of the, inc of the reflected probability current to the incident probability current. Similarly, our transmitted current is going to be equal to the total reflected, so let me just draw it here, it's going to be the proportion of the transmitted probability current over the incident. So it's just a proportion of how much of that probability is getting through the potential step, how much it, of it is getting reflected. So this is what we're going to do. So first things first, let's find out what the probability current is in each region. So let's get rid of this here and let's find the probability current for region 1. So J1, we're going to have the following, I h bar over 2m, and now we're going to have the complex conjugate function. So remember that our psi 1, it was e to the i k 1x plus r e to the i k 1x, and this one here was negative. So what we're going to do is the complex conjugate of an exponential is simply the same exponential times 1. So we're going to have e to the minus i k 1x minus, sorry, this will be plus because it's just the complex conjugate, r 
e to the plus i k1 x. So we're just inverting the sign to get the complex conjugate. And we're going to times this by the first derivative of this function here. So that's going to be i k1 e to the i k1 x minus i k1 r e to the minus i k1 x. And now we're going to subtract the following function. So we're going to have the function itself here, e to the i k1 x plus r e to the minus i k1 x times the derivative of the complex conjugate. So it would be this one minus i k1 e to the minus i k1 x plus i k1 r times e to the i k1 x. Okay, so this seems like a rather complicated expression, but all we need to do really is just to expand this out and see what we get. So we're going to have the following. We have i h bar over 2m. And now for this term, let's see what we get. We're going to have this times that. Well, the e's are going to cancel out, so we're going to have i k1. So very simple term there. Now here we're going to have the following, we're going to have this times that, so this becomes minus i k1 r e to the minus i k1 x, but now we have a t here because we have this times that. Now for this one here we're going to have plus i k1 r e to the 2 i k1 x, and unfortunately because the signs here are different, these two do not cancel out. But now we're going to have this times that, so we're going to have minus i k1 times r squared. And now this is going to cancel out with that to give us 1, so this remains as is. And now we're going to have minus this whole thing here, so let's see what we get. We have this times that, it gives us minus i k1. Then we're going to have this times this expression here, so that becomes plus i k1 r e to the 2i k1 x and now for this one here we're going to have this times that so this is going to become minus i k1 r e to the minus 2i k1 x and finally this times that so that's plus i k1 r squared e and this cancels out actually, so we're just left with this right here. Okay, so this seemed like a very tedious process, but hopefully we can do some simplifications now. So we're going to have this here. And let's see what we can do with this. I'm just going to draw a different color so we can actually see what's happening. Well, we have this term here, and this term there. This minus times that minus that becomes a plus, so this whole term is going to disappear with that one. Now the next thing is we have this here, and we have minus times this, so this is going to disappear as well. And now what's going to happen is we're going to group these two, so we, we're going to have the following. We're going to have 2ik1, right? And then here we have minus times minus, that's going to be minus 2 i k1 r squared. So that was a really nice simplification and look what happens now. This 2 cancels out here. Now the i comes out so that becomes i squared which is minus 1. So we have minus h bar times k1 over m and this is going to be 1 minus r squared. So that's essentially what we're going to have. Now this is going to imply two things. We're going to have our j incident is going to have is going to be the quantity that does not contain any reflectance coefficient in it. So this is just going to be h bar k1 over m. But essentially what we care about is just the absolute value of this. So this is just going to be h bar k1 over m. And then for our reflected current density or probability current, we're going to have j ref is going to be equal to h bar k1m 
times r squared. So those are the two quantities we're going to have. So now what is really interesting is that we can actually find out what the total probability of our particle getting reflected is going to be. So this is just going to be the absolute value of j ref over j incident. And we know that if we divide this by that, this term and this term cancel out, so we're left with simply r squared. And if we remember from the last video, we know that we had k1 minus k2, now this is going to be squared over, so let me just make a little bit more room here, k1 plus k2 squared. So this is the total probability of reflection from that potential step. Now we're going to apply the same logic to find the, the transmitted probability or the prob total probability of transmission. And in order to do that, we're going to apply the exact same thing. So we're going to have the following. Let's just get rid of this here. So now we're going to use the second wave function for that matter. We're going to have wave function 2. It's going to be equal to t times e to the i k2 x. So if we put this thing in here, the first term is going to be the complex conjugate. So that's t e to the minus i k2 x. Now this is going to be much easier. The first derivative of this is going to be i k2 t e to the i k2 x. And immediately we notice that these two are going to cancel out and then minus the function itself e i k2 x times the, the complex conjugate which is going to be minus t sorry that should be the derivative of the complex conjugate which is i k2 t e to the minus i k2 x and then this cancels out with that. So we're going to have minus times minus, that's plus. This is plus. So J2 is going to be I H bar over 2M times 2 I K2 T squared. And now we notice that this 2 goes out. And then we have I times I, that's I squared minus H bar k2 over m t squared and now if we take the the absolute value of that for our transmitted probability we're just going to get h bar k2 m t squared and if we take the proportion of well essentially we're taking the proportion of our incident current density to our transmitted current density so this is the incident one we're going to have the following, so transmitter is going to be equal to J T R N over J incident. And this is going to be equal to, we're going to have H bar K2 M. And then if we remember from the first video, we found that this was 2K1 over K1 plus K2 squared over h bar k1 over m and the h bar over m is going to cancel out on both and now we're going to be left with the following so we're going to get k2 over k1 times 4 k1 squared over k1 plus k2 squared and now one of these is going to cancel out with that one so this leaves us with 4k1 k2 over k1 plus k2 squared so this is now the total probability that the particle gets transmitted and you notice that k1 and k2 are essentially just related to the energies of the system so give me a particular energy and i'll tell you what the probability of the particle getting transmitted or reflected from the potential step is going to be so this is what we find out from this potential step problem so it's a really interesting thing and and applying this concept of the probability flux or probability current it turns out to be quite interesting now we're going to apply the same kind of reasoning and physical solution problem to the potential barrier which is what we'll study in the next video